prescribed burning is an increasingly important management tool today for land resource management and it's, it's very difficult to get this out to the community that doesn't know about it without having some demonstration of actual fire. And it can be done very simply and yet illustrate the principles of how you uh, ignite and control a, a, a fire. The advantage of a small scale burn is, like this is that you can do it almost anywhere. And right now, this one is illustrated by a, a driveway, a road that's on a ranch and it has a good uh, uh, bare ground all around it so there's no danger of a fire escaping here. The real purpose for doing a demonstration like this is to get more people so that they are comfortable with the fact that we can have fires that are good for the environment and can be handled safely. The more you understand about fire behavior, the more you understand about the physics and the chemistry that goes behind fire, the better you're able you are to actually manage them properly and, and then people are more comfortable with them. To have fire, you have to have heat, fuel, and oxygen. And without one of those, uh, all three of those elements, you can't have the fire. So that's the technique, that's the basic principle of we use to control a prescribed fire is to work with either uh, adding to or removing one of those three legs of the triangle. For example, the heat comes when we start the fire by putting the diesel fuel and gasoline mixture on there to get it going. That creates more heat and generates the fire we want. That's the fire we want to have. If that fire gets loose and we need to put it out, we have two ways of controlling that. One is to cool it back down again, which is with, by putting water on it, and that's the reason for the water being there. And the other is to remove the oxygen from it, which would be with a swatter, where you actually suppress the fire by just smothering it with a piece of uh, heavy, heavy duty rubber. So there are, there are several ways of controlling the fire with uh, the, the addition or removal of the legs of the triangle in there. The fuel in this case is the grass that we're burning, so it's going to be there no matter what. And we, if we have to have remove, removal of that fuel, that would be when you use a rake to break it out and pull it outside of the burn unit and get it into a fire break or somewhere. That would be another way of suppressing it if you had to do that. We also like to emphasize the, the effect of the, the weather on the fire behavior. The main factors are the wind speed and the relative humidity. The temperature is also a factor, but it's, it's mainly in it how it affects the relative humidity. And we will monitor those continuously through the fire and certainly before the fire to determine if we have right conditions for, for lighting the fire. To light the fire, we start out with uh, a drip torch a drip torch is just a con container that has fuel in it that's got about three parts of diesel to one part of gasoline. When we're having a small scale demonstration like this, when you, the advantage of it being that you can do it almost anywhere uh, and you can do it almost any time is because you have control of the weather. And one, the way we control the wind is to use a leaf blower, which is very important in demonstrating a fire and fire behavior. So it's also good to have a, an extra person handy to be able to operate that for you, turn it on or off when you need to, and to be able to direct it as needed to make the fire go where you want it to go. One of the other pieces of equipment that we like to have at a demonstration like this is some sort of fire suppression equipment. What we're illustrating here today is an ATV with a, a pressure sprayer mounted on top of it. Uh, it could be a UTV or, or a backpack sprayers or almost any other devices, but you need to illustrate the point that if there is an escape, you have some means to put that fire out quickly. It's also very useful, particularly when you're working with kids at the end of a demonstration, to let them put out the remaining embers that are burning, and that's a good way for them to get involved. Some of the things that we like to include in our demonstration of this is the protective uh, uh, gear that you would need to do it safely. It's highly recommended that you have some minimum amount of gear to uh, make sure that you're, you don't get hurt and that you can fight the fire uh, adequately if it does escape from you. Gloves are very important for all of the people on the crew to have in order to, pr to protect their hands because they might be handling something hot. The other part of protective gear that we, we always like to uh, remind people of is to wear something that is flame resistant, flame retardant. But a lot of our people, and particularly most of the landowners, will use just cotton clothing such as blue jeans, 
and a cotton shirt, something of that sort. What you really want to avoid is having synthetic materials, particularly nylon, polypropylene, those types of things on you, because they, when they burn or get hot, they will melt and they stick to your skin. Wool would be okay too, but most of the time uh, we're, we're burning where it's too hot to be using wool. From a shoe standpoint, most uh, recommendations are you use leather shoes, like uh, boots of some sort. Uh, uh, Lace-up boots are better. It's good to advise the students what all is required when they are considering going on to an actual fire. And we need to get that across to the adults as well as make sure they're prepared to do it properly and safely. First thing we do is start a, a test fire and we do that by getting outside of the burn unit and we go to a spot that's protected such as this one here and I'm going to uh, light that on fire by putting a little fuel on it and then I ignite it with my uh, butane lighter. It tells me the fuel that we're going to burn is really burning well today and it also verifies the wind direction so that we know that we've got the right uh, uh, setup for the wind down here. So until you start the fire you don't know for sure and this way if it's not right you can put it out and go home for the day. And the basic principle of all prescribed burning is that you start on the most downwind side and you burn into the wind to create a, an area called a black line or an area of reduced fuel so that when the fire comes down it runs out of fuel. Okay, now we're going to do the flank fires and I'll come up on this side first. And then I'll go on the other side. If I had two drip torch bearers, I could, they'd both go at the same time on this. And you've got your suppression equipment all around the outside. So there, if there's any escape from across that, you're ready to get on it immediately. And that's what your ATVs and all your people with swatters and all are doing. So that when you get ready to light the head fire, that everything is protected and there's nowhere for the fire to go because all the fuel has been burned out. Fire is an increasingly important part of our ecology and until we removed it in the early days for safety reasons and we found out that was not such a good idea and as a result we've gotten growth coming back in where we have unwanted vegetation. It's re it causes a lot of uh, economic cost by going in and having to put in herbicides and do uh, mechanical removal of those uh, vegetation as well as it, it uh, puts some risk to the environment from using all the chemicals and different treatments. Fire is a very natural part of the ecosystem and we removed it and as a result we got the things we don't want and now we're trying to get it back in there. If we can educate the youth to get them started so they're comfortable with it, maybe within a generation there will be greater acceptance of using fire in the ecosystem.